I'm Kevin Allison. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. The publication of Pope Francis's first encyclical is today. The Pope has said it is the work of four hands, his and his predecessor, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. CNS Rome Bureau Chief Francis Rocca discusses the significance of the dual authorship of this encyclical on faith. <laughs> Catholics have been waiting for more than five years for Pope Benedict XVI to issue an encyclical on faith, to complete his trilogy on the three theological virtues, which also included Deus Caritas Est on charity and Spe Salvi on hope. So everyone was very surprised to learn shortly after Pope Benedict's announcement that he would resign that he would in fact not be completing that encyclical. Benedict, who remembered that his own first encyclical had been based on the work of his predecessor, may well have expected that his successor would finish the encyclical. In fact, that's just what has happened. In June, Pope Francis told a group of bishops in Rome that his own first encyclical would be a, written, quote unquote, with four hands, that it would be a collaboration between himself and Benedict, and that in fact most of it has been written by his predecessor. It's highly unusual, if not unprecedented, for a pope to make it so explicit that a document he's releasing has actually two popes as its authors. And highlighting this dual authorship is significant in several ways. For one thing, it can only strengthen the authority of the document in most Catholics' minds to know that not one but two popes wrote it. It also helps give a sense of a bridge between the papacies of Benedict and Francis following the very dramatic, if not traumatic, event of Benedict's resignation. Because we can expect that the hands of both authors will be evident in the text, it's also an example of what Benedict called innovation and continuity in the development of doctrine and practices in the church. And perhaps most important, it makes very clear that the office of the papacy is separate and distinct from any given man that might be holding it. Looking now at news from around the country, 58 faith representatives, including Archbishop William Lorry of Baltimore, signed and released an open letter urging the U.S. government to expand conscience protections in its health and human services contraceptive mandate. Members of the group held a news conference to discuss why they issued the letter. The letter itself states that, and I quote, many of the signatories on this letter do not hold doctrinal objections to the use of contraception. Yet we stand united in protest to this mandate, recognizing the encroachment on the conscience of our fellow citizens. Whatever our challenges, America has always returned back to the founding principles of this new republic that religious liberty and freedom of conscience are not government grants handed out to the deserving in the minds of the government. Religious liberty and freedom of conscience are inalienable rights granted by the Creator, and these natural rights belong to all persons, not just those who are in the majority of the ambient culture. The HHS mandate requires that all organizations, including religious ones like Catholic colleges that I have taught in, and currently teach in, provide insurance coverage that includes abortion-inducing drugs like Ella and Plan B, contraceptives, and sterilization procedures. This mandate will require me, as a faithful Catholic, to purchase insurance that my church teaches is seriously immoral. American religious institutions, family-owned businesses, and private persons should not be forced to pay for drugs and services which violate their deeply held convictions. American religious institutions, family-owned businesses, and individuals should not pay fines to upheld their religious ideas. When a prospective employee signs on to, let's say, a church institution or uh, a business that's being run uh, consciously, intentionally as a Christian institution, one understands there's, there's a kind of a mission there, there's a kind of an ethos there. And I, I think those employers are pretty upfront about that right at the beginning. Uh, and so it's always a person's choice whether he or she wants to sign on to such a thing or not. We're not going to back down 
uh, on this question. Uh, I think the government has been waiting us out uh, for some time, thinking that uh, Roman Catholics and evangelicals and, and others uh, who are opposed to these things will, will somehow go away. We're not going away. We're going to continue to speak to this. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the next step is to ask the administration again to reconsider, as we have in this letter, and also to work with members of Congress uh, toward a legislative solution. And finally in the news, the first mass was celebrated on the campus of the former Crystal Cathedral, soon to be Christ Cathedral in California's Diocese of Orange. Catholic News Service was at the first mass and spoke with attendees about the new cathedral. I'm also interested in that shadow of the cathedral. That, that's a huge beacon for the world. You can see it from the freeway. You can see it down Chapman. You can see it from one end of the city to the other. We're going to continue that. We're going to be a beacon to the world in that same tradition. And indeed, it is wonderful to be here with you today for this great celebration, an historical moment in the history of the parish and the history of the Diocese of Orange. It's all about energy, and it's all about like being the leaven or being the beginning, the starter. <laughs> and that's what these folks have been willing to do to build a place where everybody will be welcome. Mass will not be celebrated inside the future Christ Cathedral building until architectural renovations and liturgical alterations are made, which is expected to be completed in 2015. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.